Okay, and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditec, CTO of DVS, and wherever you are in the world, a big thank you for watching this video. I hope you're safe, and I hope we can give you some added value by providing this content to you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you'll be notified of any content that goes live at the minute that's happening sort of very, very regularly, and we try to keep it as informative as we can. So today, in the highlight of um, the current situation, I thought I'd run through the Hikevision Remote Backup Tool. This is a tool you can install on a PC remotely to the site that you want to retrieve footage from, whether it's automatically or manually. So this gives you a way of archiving footage remotely from a site that may be critical or time sensitive, um, or that you just want to provide a dual path backup. So it's as simple as this. Install the remote backup tool on, a, on the PC of your choice, um, remotely from the site, or it could be on site. So instead of using a NAS Ipsan um, storage or adding hard drives, you could add a PC and use it for the secondary storage actually on the site in question. Um, but it does fit quite well um, for remote support and assistance in this current environment and climate. So open the tool, remote backup. If any of you want, I can send the link separately. So there's two options in this. So th this is the latest version um, as of right now, but again, always check because they make improvements as this goes through. There's a couple of options. So you can either configure this manually or you can click the configuration button and you can actually, it's almost like a wizard where you can select the um, appropriate uh, file paths of where the footage is saved and go through it that way. So you can see here, operation when backup space insufficient, stop downloading and prompt, and then overwrite all this backup files and continue to download. So it's up to you which uh, option you choose. I fitted a USB, because I don't want this saving on my primary C drive, so I fitted quite a large SSD uh, USB into my PC just for the um, purpose of demonstration. And you can see that it's actually listed as this S drive, uh, F drive here, the T100 device or I can use a network location if you have a network drive that's associated with this PC. So select the drive, stop and download and prompt, click OK, and that's done. So the next thing you can do is add devices in, um, or you can do schedule backup, video search, log, or manual backup. So first of all, we have to add the device, so quite importantly. So I'm gonna add my device in. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. So you've got IP address, IP segment, batch import, or the name name. So the domain name would be um, the Hike Connector name name, and that's with the port forwarding done. So if you've used the Hike Connect, uh, I've done a separate video on this, but Hike Connect, um, do the port forwarding, so 88,000, for instance, which is the default ones, associate your name to that, and then change the P to P from auto to manual and put the relevant ports in, and then you'll be able to put the device name and device name, the default is a serial number or whatever you choose in there and fill that in as appropriate to you. So we're gonna give it a device name. We'll use a local IP address on the network. So 192.168.3.40. Actually, I put it in the wrong one. IDS X NVR. IP address 192.168.3.40. Port 8000 admin, type the password in. And then flow control kilobytes, a number, a number, flow control kilobytes, a number no less than 32. That's, it's not mandatory. That's if you want to limit how much data comes out of the machine into this software. So if you've got to sort of narrow the bandwidth down um, for whatever reason, you can put it in there, but it can't be less than 32 kilobytes. I'm going to leave it blank because it's on the local network. I shouldn't have a throttle issue. So I'm going to click on OK to add that. And the device is now added. You can see there it's actually online. Okay, so we've added the device, go home. We're gonna do a manual backup in the first instance. Click manual backup. You have to add a manual backup yourself. So click add backup, give it a name. So Dave DVS, oops, press the right mouse button. Dave DVS, okay. Now video type is all scheduled, alarm, motion detection or manual. So you can choose what actual footage you're backing up, whether it's scheduled, alarm, motion detection, or manual. Select the time and date that you want to download the footage from. So we'll say today, and we'll say midnight, 10 minutes. So midnight to 10 past. Add the channels in. So stream type is self-adaptive mainstream substream. We'll select the mainstream because I want to pull down the highest quality video footage. But you could select the substream if you only want to pull some footage down to check or to save off site for reference. 
add channel. So we're going to say side gate and make it uh, that one and that one. So we'll do four cameras, click OK. So all your devices will be lifted on the left hand side. So you've got all of your um, cameras that we've added there. Now we're going to do the manual backup. So click OK. So it says edit in the backup schedule, reboot the current schedule, continue, click OK. And you can see there it's gone to connect to the machine and it should start downloading the footage from those um, device from the devices and the appropriate channels. So it's actually doing that now. So this may take a couple of minutes to achieve. So the depending on your um, bandwidth on the site and how many channels, the resolution, frame rate, the encoding algorithms, that will all affect how long this takes to achieve. So I'm just going to pause this and come back when it's finished because you don't want to watch this for two minutes. Okay, so welcome back. That did download, but it did take um, sort of five, ten minutes. So you have joined us once the download has finished. So what I'm going to show you quickly is once it's downloaded, we've downloaded to the F drive like I showed you. So we're going to open up VS Player. Play on, play on. Um, add those files in. So we'll locate to the F drive. It's created a file on there for record file. Each camera is time and date stamp within the folder. So we'll select this video footage. Luckily, I only did four cameras, but you can do up to 16 in the VS player. And it's as simple as this. Make it a four-way split. Drag that footage across. And you can see that's the footage of the 10 minutes that I requested there. So you can play them back asynchronously or synchronize them so they all play back together or separately. You've got your toolbox down there. So clip, convert, merge, and privacy mask. Um, speed up, speed down, export, etc. Up to 16 cameras, really, really powerful tool. Um, but you can see there, that's how it downloaded into the save location. Um, what you can also do is go to the folder F drive and you can see that's the uh, folder it created with each camera in its own individual folder. And it will keep doing that every time uh, footage is saved, whether manually or scheduled. The next section to this is the schedule backup. So go into there. This is making a schedule backup that will run um, for the time period that you allow. So it's as simple as this. You can have multiple um, backups compiled within the software because it, it may be different sites, different units, or different cameras have different rules appropriate to them. So select Add Backup and call it DVSHQ, for instance, and click OK. Now, the stream type is either self-adaptive, mainstream, or substream. I'm going to select mainstream, but it could be you select substream because you don't need the high-quality mainstream for evidential purposes. You just want that for um, reference, perhaps, or you don't have the pipeline to get that footage down in an appropriate time. So you choose the one that's appropriate to you. Click Add Channel. So we're going to select two cameras from this unit because this could be my... Um, high security room, uh, lots of diamonds, jewels, weapons in there, etc. Whatever that might be. Could be a till, ATM, fuel pump, whatever that is. Select the camera, click OK, and then it's as simple as this. Go down to the bottom and select by default the whole week is selected, so it will run the same schedule on every day. If you want to change that so the default of every week is inappropriate, you simply Deselect it, select the days appropriate, and you can change it per day. So you could change the record time uh, per day, um, or you don't want it on a Monday and Tuesday because there's nothing that happens on that site on a Monday and Tuesday that's worth backing up remotely. But we'll select for the purpose of the demo the whole week. The recording time is the chunk or the segment of footage that will be downloaded from the two cameras that we selected above. So from six o'clock till midnight, but you change this according to your needs. So I'm going to say from eight o'clock to midnight, for instance, on these two cameras, because I have a delivery high value on these two cameras that I need to record off site for evidential purposes. Video type is all scheduled motion alarm or manual. Now the default is all that's how you should leave it. But if you select motion detection, for instance, that will only download footage that has been the motion has been recorded on the end device should it be enabled and you've set that as the record parameter it doesn't change it to motion detection recording on the end device 
the backup time is when this backup occurs so between six o'clock and midnight so again this is generally out of working hours so the traffic on the network is lower and um, because your staff aren't using it and generally because there's uh, less people using it at that time on outside of the building or even just on the www then you'll find that it'll probably be a little bit quicker there'll be more allocated bandwidth that you can take advantage of but again you adjust that as appropriate if it's locally on the site and you're just using this to collect it into a central location to store it then it doesn't really matter and the backup date by default is one day before so we're doing this daily and um, but you can select it from zero up to 30 days depending on what is applicable to you if you do select 30 days then it might be a big chunk of footage that you're downloading okay so once you're happy that you filled the parameters and the parameters in as required simply click ok and then ok on that you can go in and you can add multiple ones you can add a different backup for instance and select different cameras different time schedules and um, that may appropriate that um, certain application or instance so it's as simple as this once you've done your so manual backup is doing it here and now schedule backup is the one that you're doing um, you know as per the schedule just remember the software and the PC have to be running for this so if the PC or the software are off this process isn't going to run and therefore it won't do that download as required but then you'd have to go in and do a manual one you've got video search so again you can select the cameras time and date and etc click search and then if you can see the network drive you should be able to pull the footage in not all usb drives and locations will allow you to do that you might get an error message saying device offline even though it is online because it's a network drive it works better when you have a drive internally fitted to the pc just for reference um, or you can just navigate to the file folder like I showed you and use VS Player and do it that way. Log search is anything that's gone on within the software. So you click search, time and date appropriate and select the correct one that you want and it'll tell you um, the appropriate thing and you can export it more for like an audit trail. And if somebody's done a manual backup or the software hasn't run, etc., then you can actually see um, what the er error or issue was. And the device management is where you add your devices in. There's also, don't forget, a user manual up here. So anything that I've talked about can be found within the software that you can simply reference in there. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe wherever I, wherever you are in the world. Really valuable tool. If you need a download link, please let us know. Other than that, stay safe, stay tuned, and stay subscribed. Thanks, and see you next week for another how-to video. Take care, guys.